We start 16 years prior to current events on the planet Brendock, as the two twins May and Osha have an argument under a tree about torturing innocent flying creatures or some shit. Before they're caught by some spiky haired alien witch called Mother Coral, who totally bollocks them for being outside the fortress walls without supervision. Because there could be anything out here, and she don't just mean creepy Asians hanging out behind some random trees. Anyway, after the opening title card, carbon leader Mother Anisha totally undermines her partner Coral and tells her to stop being such a buzzkill and let the bloody kiddies have some space ice creams already. So said Coral Bird totally grasses on the kids and says she caught them outside the bloody walls again and harassing innocent bugs and stuff. And worse, the scouts have seen some Jedi peeps prowling around the woods. But just caresses her cheek and says not to worry bro, cause this planet's well safe Gil. And before you can say, holy interracial alien space lesbos Batman, we cut to Anisia doing a quick training session for the twins, explaining about how all living things in the universe are connected by something called the thread of destiny. Though why she just can't call it the force like everyone else in the Star Wars galaxy, I don't know. Anyway, after smacking up literal children to get them to pay attention already, she explains how at tonight's ascension ceremony, they'll experience the power of many. Yeah, last time I experienced the power of many, I just left the venue with a sore ass and vowed never ever to attend another bloody pop-up orgy ever again. Anyway, later, little Osha reckons she don't really want to do this ascension thingy and become a bona fide lesbo space witch. Presumably because she wants to go out and find a boyfriend when she's older and stuff. But her mum says, you don't know what you're talking about, girl. And you've got everything you need right here. And are just like any other normal black kid with an absent father. Also later, the twins have another Barney. This time about Osha wanting to leave and May wanting to stay. And also wondering why they're the only two children on the planet and in the entire community. Because that's super weird, bro. Especially since there ain't any men around, so how the fuck did they even get made in the first place? Anyway... After some late night cringy chanting scenes setting up the ascension ceremony, the stunning and brave secret space witches imply that the force somehow conceived the twins by quote, We were blessed with a miracle, the gift of life. <laughs> Just like that time that Mary Bird got up the duff by some invisible bloke what lives in the clouds and stuff. So they go on to do some even more cringy chanting. to officially induct them both into their clan, which mainly just involves shoving her hands in their face for shits and giggles. But before little Osha can get literally face palmed into the tribe, the ceremony is interrupted by younger versions of them Jedi peeps who keep being attacked and killed in the current day. And look, Carrie Ann Moss is back. Well, sort of, because I think they've used CGI to make her face all weird. But I guess they now found the dosh to afford to give her more screen time, given the budget per ep is 22.5 mil, and all they've seemed to spend it on so far are tiny sets and English lessons for actor Lee Jung Jae, who was apparently given four separate dialogue coaches for this role, and who practiced speaking English so hard that his tongue was eventually worn out and he couldn't eat properly. You know, the same thing happened to me once, and there's another reason I refuse to go back to that pop-up orgy thing. Itchy, anyway. The space lesbos tell them all to get lost already. But Indara says it's illegal to conjure up kids out of thin air and then train them to be fighters. Because that's their bloody job. And besides, someone put a call into Childline, given you've apparently been smacking them around and bollocking them for sitting under trees and shit. And although Coral tries to pretend they ain't got no stinking kids around here, the Wookiee Jedi totally sniffs them out. As a young Master Soul instantly hands one of them a deadly weapon because reasons. Because he's totally trying to groom them into coming with him to become a Jedi fella. I think you would make a very good Jedi, Osha. Would you like to be tested and see if you could become one? Yes. Naturally, the coven of lesbos worry that they're trying to take their children away, given this Asian fella's doing everything he can to pressure the little ones to go away with him. But not wanting to escalate matters and get into a violent confrontation with said Jedi, given they're trying to remain off the radar and out of the crosshairs of the Republic, they agree to let these randos test the girls for false sensitivity. And I can totally relate. Cause my mother had me tested as a kid too. And I soon tested positive for all sorts. Including ADHD, severe autism and dyslexia. 
but never for having telekinetic force powers, unfortunately. Lame. Also, naturally, they try to tell the girls to intentionally fail, said Test, given they don't want them to leave with these poncy bozos, and hilariously tell their own kids to lie, cheat, and deceive, so they don't get effectively kidnapped by a bunch of government officials. So the next morning, they head off for the test. And although little Osha don't really want to lie, cheat, and do a bunch of bad things, Major says, stop being a little pussy old and get ready to lie your ass off, Gil. Otherwise, we'll never see our lesbo space mums ever again. And whilst May is off doing hers, Osha says hello to the Wookiee fella, who's only slightly less intelligible than the current POTUS, to be fair. <laughs> True international average of pressure! And after failing to fail the test by incorrectly giving the incorrect answers that they then incorrectly say are correct anyway just to fuck with her mind and give her a passing grade, Sol tells her to man up and take a stand against her feminist space mums while keep encouraging her to be a lying, cheating toe rag. Because if she really wants to be a Jedi and go travel the stars and stuff, then she needs to have the bloody courage to tell the truth already. Naturally, said lesbo space mums totally bollock her for not being able to lie properly and then gaslight her by saying that them Jedis are playing mind games with her, and putting all those dreams about her going off and travelling the stars and shit in her head themselves. And May just can't believe her own twin screwed them over and now wants to go off and do her own thing. But after she calms down a bit, her chocolate mum says that if she really wants to sod off and follow her dreams, then just bloody do it already. Cause I guess she can just summon a new kid out of the ether or some shit. But little May still can't get over her siblings' treachery and now about to be stuck here on her own with a bunch of lame-ass adults what do cringy chanting and presumably a bit of scissoring on the side. So she locks her own twin in her room and sets the gaff on fire. I'm a fire starter, fire starter. And before you can say, hold up, so why does she want revenge on all the Jedi in current day if she was in fact the one what started the fire and killed all her friends and family in the first place? That's a great question. I've been wondering that myself. Said fire seems to spread rapidly all across the walls and ceilings of the stone cave what's made out of stone because reasons. As Osha manages to escape underground and totally confront that naughty child arsonist who solemnly reports that their lesbo space mum is totally deaded and then just proceed to constantly ask each other what they've done because terrible writing, bro. What have you done? What have you done? And as the bridge suddenly collapses, little May seems to fall to her death, as Master Soul arrives just in the nick of time to save the other, and is rather relieved that it's the one he wanted all along to take with him and train up in she. Nice. And after running back through the rooms of dead bodies, and also passing her mother's corpse and further traumatising the poor lass, Soul consoles Osha up on his ship, after succeeding in his child trafficking scheme and finally managing to kidnap a minor as the entire temple collapses down below only mere hours after the mostly peaceful Jedi turned up to say hi. And we end with little May waking up under that golden tree outside the walls. And it's just a little bummed that there's no more bugs to harass and torture, and also that everyone's totally deaded, and now she's all alone and she... And that's it. That's the third epi. Though my favourite part was when it was implied that the Coven of Space Witches totally conceived the twins using some kind of magic force. Where is their father? They have no father. I did not bring the girls into this world so we could lose them to a bunch of deranged monks. It is not your decision. I carried them. I created them. What? Uh, so, Anisha fathered them then? Uh, does, does this mean that she's the man? Or trans? Dear God. Are we talking about trans lesbo space witches now? Good bloody lordy, Disney. Uh, uh, how about we just move on to episode 4 and try to forget that this shit ever bloody happened? We start on the planet Kofa, as Jedi Wookiee fella Kelnaka chillaxes in his house. Whilst over on Coruscant, Osha says goodbye to Jackie now she's cleared her name, proved her innocence and also found out her twin is still alive, and is now totally walking out on Soul and the Jedi for a second time in recent years while said twin and the lovable Asian scoundrel Kaimi promptly land on Kofa and head off to find and kill that hairy fella what loves minding his own business out in the woods. Which doesn't sound too good to be fair, because the last fella what wanted to be left alone to live in the woods got himself and his whole family ambushed by the feds. Uh, no! Anyway, after the opening title card, 
a bunch of Jedi officials and a random penis head from the OG Phantom Menace film back in the day, try to analyse this evil twin bird what keeps targeting four specific Jedi and already having yeeted two of them, and they just can't believe that she's an apprentice who doesn't seem to know the identity of her own master. But Soldier says, chill bro, because she's totally not a threat, because I confronted her and easily beat her, given she was just doing spinny kicks and not even using lightsabers or false powers and stuff. But Fenestra says, well, she can't be that fucking weak given she gave you the slip, you dopey git. And again panicking about the political optics of such a scandal should it link to the general public, Fenestra says they need to know who trained her right fuckity now. So she tells Sol to go warn Kilnaka at his post on Kofar, given the poor sod's probably next on the hit list, whilst May and Kaimir do some bonding about both never having seen their master's face. And she soon asks him what her sister was like when he briefly met her back in episode 2. Cause she just can't believe she's now Jedi scum and also nicked her hairstyle. Bruh. Anyway, Sol soon spots Osha walking about and tells her to stop giving up and walking out on him all the time. Cause you're meant to be one of us and she. And also, we might be able to get through to May's good side if you can come with us and totally talk to your chocolatey doppelganger. Though, not sure why he's talking as if her twin is just somehow misguided rather than a cold blooded solar serial killer what loves doing a bunch of bad things. But she eventually agrees, and up on the ship, Lord explains that no one's heard from poor Kalnaka for a while, which probably ain't a good sign. While some sort of alien otter fella called Basil rudely gets sprayed in the face by Osha's droid because reasons. Turns out said otter fella is just there to be used as a super tracker, and is soon deployed to sniff out that elusive Bigfoot bloke. And on the way, Osha tries to get Yor to promise her that he'll totally yeet her evil twin if she fails to get through to her by appealing to her better nature. But he just says, no way, girl. Cause Sol brought you here to face her yourself. So stop trying to palm off your own responsibilities to other people with stupid haircuts and shut up about it already. After a random interlude where Sol takes a moment to slice the flying bug in half and a scene which presumably just exists to blow a few mil on the VFX budget, given this whole show is clearly some sort of money laundering operation for Disney to justify 22.5 mil on this shit, Jackie just shrugs when Osha says she totally sensed that bug thing before it attacked, and then chats some bollocks about how We're not defined by what we lose. We're defined by what we survive. A scene which must have been guest written by the Walking Dead showrunner, since such vague nonsense is textbook Gimple speak. But you know it. No one's gone until they're gone. I know what you're trying to do. No one's gone until they're gone. I've been trying to believe it too, to feel better about what I've done, but I can't. Because sometimes, when you're gone, you're just gone. What? Meanwhile, May is soon hit with a sudden epiphany and realises her master's final lesson always said is one you teach yourself. And when he said about needing to kill a Jedi without a weapon, he meant to take on a Jedi whilst defenceless yourself, given killing a defenceless person goes against everything they stand for. Something which she reckons is impossible, because she's already tried that and couldn't even get near one of them whilst he was floating about unconscious and stuff. But Kaime suspiciously snaps and says it's not impossible at all, bro, because you convinced that pussy old white boy to gobble up some poison. So I guess just keep doing that or some shit. After the main gang somehow lose battle the tracker and hilariously worry that they're now going to need another tracker just to track the original tracker, May lures the dopey Asian scoundrel into a trap so she can be free to go turn herself in to Kalnaka, given she can't be asked with all this anymore. And seeing that her twin was alive again last week has totally changed her perspective on stuff. Because at the end of the day, life's too bloody short to go gallivanting around the universe causing trouble and spreading hate which is music to my ears, given hopefully this means that this is the end of the show and the last bloody time I have to sit through this trash. And although Kaimir warns that the master will kill her ass for such treachery, she just shrugs and runs off, before Sol tells Osha that they're both hopefully going to confront their past by confronting that May bird with the two mums. And once he gets May safely back to the ship, he'll finally explain everything. And before you can say... Well, he may as well be wearing a red shirt, given those were famous last words if I ever heard them, and also we're only halfway through the series. May indeed finds Kalnaka's hidden heart, mainly by tripping over that alien otter fella, who probably makes more pain shrieking sounds than Katie Price in heat, and thereby alerting the Jedi gang to their location. But in a shocking twist, what no one could ever see coming. Turns out the member of the group of four Jedi, who have been solely targeted to be killed all this time, has already been totally killed and all whilst relaxing in his own gaff. 
liberties. And she just can't believe that she's too late and now the stinking US Marshals have finally got to him before she could. Also liberties. And as the Jedi gang surround the house and call for May to totally surrender like she was always going to do anyway, well at least before now being framed for another naughty murder killing, some creepy gimp bloke floats down behind Osha. And it looks like it's curtains for the galaxy's number one good twin with the terrible acting skills. But luckily, he just tosses her aside like yesterday's turd. And then force repels the attacking Jedi when they rush to take him on. And before you can say, well the evil mystery master is clearly climb here, given every other character on this planet is present in this scene except for him. We cut to the end credits. Just when things were finally getting interesting. And that's it. That's the Airbnb. Now, my favourite part was how the first live action Jedi Wookiee fella was introduced and then killed off after doing sweet FA the whole series. And only using the force one single time. And not even getting to use a goddamn lightsaber. But anyway, that's the plot and that has your lot. Considering that male thing so you don't miss episodes 5 and 6 when they drop. Tell me if you like this show in the comments if you have time. And I'll ambush you in the next one.